Well, good morning, folks. Welcome back to the farm. It is a less than pleasant morning here this morning. As you can see, we've got just a tinge of the white stuff. We were, you know, creeping out, <laughs> creeping out of winter, but it just keeps kind of trying to sink its claws in there. So this morning we woke up, it was minus six. It was pretty foggy and it has now turned into a light blanket of snow. And this is concerning because on Thursday, we're going to have all our meat chicks show up. So the other day we set up the brooder, the little chicken house as a brooder. Uh, so we function tested all the heat lamps, things like that. So it's just a matter of, you know, Wednesday night, come in, flick the switch, turn everything on and we'll be good. This morning with it being cold, I don't know how long this cold weather is going to last for, but I thought, well, hmm, I may want to turn this building into a heat sink. And what I mean by a heat sink is I want to preheat it so that you know, when the chicks come in, I open up the door. It doesn't rob all the heat. There'll still be heat stored inside the walls and in the void spaces in the building. So I've got, <laughs> against my better judgment, I should say, uh, three heat lamps and a space heater in there. Get in that building, heat it up. I've even blocked up. You see the whirly bird going on the roof, but I've actually stuffed uh, some insulation up inside there. So that's just the wind that's turning that. There's not actually any airflow going through it. So just try to get everything sealed up as tight as we possibly can, get the whole building preheated. Then when we bring the chicks in, it's just going to be a matter of everybody goes in at once and we close the door behind us and try and keep it sealed up as tight as we possibly can because we don't want to lose any chicks in the cold weather. The other thing I'm going to work on is getting water rigged up. So we have a couple of one gallon uh, chick waterers. So I'll mix up a batch of honey, apple cider vinegar and water. So it's uh, one tablespoon of honey, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and then fill the rest up with uh, water reason for the honey is really good for their immune system uh, as well as it's sweet so it encourages them to go back and, and drink and then the apple cider vinegar you know it's it's more anecdotal there's nothing really scientific behind apple cider vinegar but the theory there is that it does help to kill a lot of the bacteria in the water and some folks say it helps build with their immune system as well so again our personal experience versus scientific knowledge is that uh, given the chicks the apple cider vinegar and the honey we haven't lost any in the brooder at all ever so if it's working we're gonna stick with it all right so i'm in the brooder here now you can still see my breath but believe it or not the heat lamps are going and the thermometer down below it says it's at 30 degrees celsius so we want to hit 35 at the ground level so I mean, just because I can see my breath up here, we've, we've still got some work to do, right? So I'm going to crank up that heater a little bit more and see if we can't get a little bit hotter in here and we'll be ready for the chicks on Thursday morning. I'm home now for the day. As I mentioned earlier, <laughs> chickens are coming. Boy, oh boy, they're going to be here Thursday morning. I'm thinking right around 7 o'clock, we're going to get a phone call from the post office. You think you have everything ready. And then I was kind of panicking this morning because I was like, oh, we don't have any chicken feed. I had to stop by Foster Seed and Feed in Beaver Lodge today and pick up six bags of the Country Junction Chick Starter Crumble. So that's made right here in Alberta. So it's nice to support. It's not super local, but at least it's within province. So we should be good for uh, should be good for a few days, anyways, to get us started, and then uh, we'll pick up everything we need on the weekend here. We're just catching the ponies. And the donkey, Charlotte's already dumped her grain. <laughs> the farrier's coming tomorrow, so we gotta get these ladies all penned up and then try and catch Eeyore and get him in here somehow as well. Well, Charlotte, should we go in there? I don't know. It's pretty risky. Can you call Eeyore? Can you call Eeyore over here? Say Eeyore. Eeyore. Come on in there, mister. They come in your. They will. Uh, come. Come. Eyes, yeah, I see a funny donkey. Funny donkey? Yeah. Uh, donkey. Uh, donkey. 
Do you love Eeyore? Uh, no, he's a donkey. He's a donkey, yeah. Uh, donkey. Hey, mister. We're just checking back in in the brooder. So this is the little heater we got running in there. We set it at 20 degrees Celsius. You can see underneath the heat lamp, we're sitting at about 42 degrees Celsius. So I think that works out to about uh, somewhere around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're definitely on the right side of the thermometer, that's for sure. So yeah, nice and warm in here. I feel a lot better now knowing that the chicks are coming Thursday and we can keep the temperature up even with a very frigid east wind because uh, that was that was a huge concern. Is even The wind's coming out of the east. That's the door side of the building. So as soon as you open up the door, all your heat gets robbed. So being able to preheat the brooder, very, very important because uh, we, can't, we can't afford to have $300 worth of chicks just spiral out of control and all die within the first day. Definitely not acceptable. So it looks like Charlotte's having a good time in here too with sawdust. Hey, what are you building over there? I'm making snowman. You making a snowman? I'm a snowman. You making a snowman? I make snowman. You make a snowman, yeah. Ha <laughs> All right, so now while we're on the subject of being here in the brooder, raising the meat chicks, how much is it really gonna cost us to do all this? Well, I actually found a pretty cool uh, broiler chick calculator on the internet today. It's at livestocking.net. I'll leave the link for that down in the description below. You can check it out. You just input the number of chicks you got and uh, how much your actual feed cost per bag is for a 25 kilo bag. The bags we have are a 20 kilo bag. So I just put in uh, $22 a bag as opposed to the 18, just kind of some rough math. And it worked out that uh, rough numbers, it's gonna cost us around $300 to feed these 75 chickens. So that's actually not that terrible. I mean, you think about the cost of the chicken in the grocery store. Well, I mean, <laughs> you can buy a chicken for like, what is it? 35, $40, so. You don't get too many, oh, you got sawdust on your face. <laughs> don't eat that. Yuck. That's yuck, isn't it? Yeah. You know what's not yuck? <laughs> Pasture raised chickens. So with our $300 feed cost, and then we were about $300 to buy all the chicks, $279 I think for all the chicks, plus their vaccines and shipping and all that to get them up here. And then, we have about $250 into the chicken tractors. The chicken tractors, though, you can really only use about 15 to 20% of that cost because that's obviously a multi-year investment. You're not going to build a new one every single year. But we did build those two this year, which we have some broody hens in right now just to do some tilling in the garden and hopefully break their broody habit. But yeah, so they'll probably last, I'm thinking five to seven years before we have to replace them. So we just got Charlotte off to bed and as you can tell, the, the weather's showing no signs at all of improving, which is fantastic. Yeah, oh, it's just exactly what we want. Anyways, I'm gonna go check on the horses, check on the sheep, and then uh, and then collect today's eggs and hopefully that can be a wrap for the day because yeah, I don't really feel like being out and doing too much for the way of chores right now. So as I mentioned, I picked up some chick starter feed today for our broiler chicks when they arrive. It is unmedicated feed, and that's super important to get the right type of feed. If you're vaccinating your chicks for coccidiosis, you're not going to want to get medicated feed because if you get medicated feed on top of a vaccination, it really messes with how effective that, that vaccination is and subsequently can lead to their demise later on down the road. So if you're, if you're vaccinated them, get unmedicated feed. If you're not vaccinated them, you can get medicated feed and honestly the feed price is pretty much the same so it's really up to you whether you do or you don't want to vaccinate your chicks we choose to vaccinate them for coccidiosis right out of the hatchery that way we just know it's done uh, and taken care of there's this kind of a school of thought well pasture poultry don't really need that vaccine because they're out on grass for us here i mean you can see how harsh our climate is they're going to spend probably two extra weeks inside confinement before we're able to get them out on grass and moving every 24 hours. So having that vaccine on board uh, does give us a little bit more peace of mind. We also choose to give them the Merrick's vaccine as well. 
there was a time when we didn't know what Merrick's disease was. And then one day we saw uh, one of our chicks that we'd acquired, we brought some chicks in from another location and it was kind of goose stepping around the yard. So then right after that, we saw another one that was acting strange as well. And it was kind of doing some weird break dancing moves. It was looked like it was paralyzed on one side. <laughs> Needless to say, once we discovered what it was, it wasn't funny at all. Uh, so then from that point on, absolutely shut the door. No outside chickens coming in unless we've gu guaranteed that they've been vaccinated or they come from a closed flock, something like that. We just don't want to have the risk of, of moving our birds in and out because, I mean, it's not uh, it's not pleasant by any means. All right, so I think I got everything absolutely possible I could think of ready for the chicks to show up. Even got a couple of new feeders for them today over at Foster Seed and Feed. While I was there, I picked up some additional poultry nipples for the bucket style water. So I uh, had mentioned this in a video the other week about the price difference. So these are some that I got from Keddies. They are the uh, the vertical style. There's four in a pack and they're $14.95. I also got some horizontal ones. There was five in a pack and they were $10.95. So here I am today at uh, Foster's in Beaver Lodge. Here's a, a five pack. The exact same one of these, exact same, for $4. My goodness, are we ever getting poached alive by these guys? So, pays to shop around, and it also pays to shop local. Anyhow, on that note, I am ready for a cup of tea. It's been a day, so I'm going to let you go for now. I hope you have a fantastic evening. We'll see you tomorrow.